Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Good Saturday morning to you. It's Room 442. <laughs> Shaman Singh, Batanian and Peraria here with you. How you doing? Getting set up for the penultimate weekend of European football, domestic league-wise at least. It's going to be good times. Big games coming up this weekend. Huge games. Yes. And we'll get to them shortly. But it is the season of, of trophies and cups uh, as well. So let's break down what's coming up for you as far as cups are concerned. A lot. All starting on May 24th. It is Coppa Italia. Fiorentina taking on Inter Milan. What a season now for Inter Milan, by the way. A week later, Sevilla taking on Roma in the Europa League final. June the 3rd sees Leipzig Eintracht Frankfurt in the German Cup the same day as the FA Cup final of course Man United against Man City it's Fiorentina West Ham in the Conference League yeah that's right Fiorentina against West Ham we love the Conference League in room 442 and then of course the big one June 10th Man City against Inter Milan yes we mentioned what a great year it's been for Inter Milan so out of all those cups right we love the big moment right the big occasion well, 90 minutes or more to win a championship. Which cup is wetting your whistle, Sarah? <laughs> Can I add another one, actually, to yeah, June 3rd? Because sure. it's a busy day. The Women's Champions League final is actually at the same time as the FA Cup final, which is meaning I'm going to have two screens going, but Barcelona's taking on Wolfsburg, and it's, it's some good football, so I'm excited for that. But, I mean, I think you can't not be excited for the Men's Champions League final as well with everything that City have been doing and the way they've been playing football. It's so exciting. Isn't it the most lopsided one, though? I mean, listen, Inter Milan will be the big underdogs on that one, right? Does that take away a little bit of the uh, allure? No, I don't think so. It's a cup final. Anything can happen in the cup final. And if there's a team that can make Pep Guardiola think too much and overthink th <laughs> things, I think it's yeah. Inter Milan playing a back five. Their system, you might see Pep change some things, which you never know how that can go. We saw it, what happened against Chelsea in the Champions League final, deciding, I think, to go with two DMs instead that's of one right, yeah. and screwed everything up, right? Chelsea ended up winning. That's not why Chelsea won, but it's it's something that Pep does in these finals that sometimes doesn't work out. He does overthink sometimes, doesn't he? But I just the way they dismantled Real Madrid, right, this past weekend, let's be honest, they dismantled Real Madrid. 5-1 overall, 4-0 on the Wednesday. Yeah. I just, as much as I respect Inter Milan, uh, a good team, a good story, I cannot see them getting the win in this one. No, I don't think so. I, it's going to be really tough, but it's one game you never know what will happen. It does feel like, and I've said this in the past, the real final was that semifinal against Real Madrid. Like, Inter Milan's path to get to where they are has been much easier than Manchester City's path. Um, Inter Milan's season, while they've had a decent season, has been not as good as Manchester City, and Inter Milan's just not as good as Manchester City. I'd even argue Inter Milan's probably not as good as five, six, seven other teams that would make a better final. So for me, yeah, it's a little bit of an underwhelming final. So it's not the return of Italian football. Three teams and three finals. <laughs> not quite. I don't. Not I'm, not, I'm not a believer. Wait. Yes, this year is incredible for Italian football. Is it the return? Can they do it next season? I'm not convinced. So that's not wetting a whistle? <laughs> no, but the FA Cup is wetting my whistle. Is. Absolutely. What I mean, a surprise. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time Manchester United and Man City are going up in, for the FA Cup. If they don't win Manchester City, they don't win the FA Cup, it's not a continental treble for that team and that's obviously going to be a, a bit of a slight on their overall resume still won't take away from what they do because I do believe they're going to go on and win the Champions League final but yeah I think it's the most mouth-watering final when you look at the two teams that are competing for it I was, oh, sorry, go ahead. no I was just going to say I saw this post on Instagram where this guy was going around asking City fans in Manchester would you guys lose to Manchester United in the FA Cup final in order to win the Champions League and they all said absolutely not we'd rather <laughs> sorry, beat Manchester like we'd yeah. rather beat Manchester United win the FA Cup and lose the Champions League because we know how good this team is and we, we can see the future like there's potential for City but they were not having that at all a Champions League they're giving up for the FA that, Cup see, that, But they've got United. a weird relationship with UEFA, right? <laughs> so you do. They've got an issue with them in that tournament in particular. Turn their back, doing the Poznan against uh, UEFA. So there's, there's a weird relationship there, I think. I think a lot of those fans are lying. Yeah, I think maybe. they want European glory. And listen, I love the FA Cup, right? And help me out here, right? Because I grew up in England watching the FA Cup, right? That was the big tournament for me personally. For people that have loved the game, but from outside those shores... Do you see the FA Cup in the same reverence as you do Coppa Italia, um, the, the, the German Cup? Is it just another Pers cup? Personally, for me, um, 
the FA Cup is is up there. I think in terms of cups, Champions League, and then it's the FA Cup. That's just my preference. What about Europa League? No, no, thank you. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm a Conference League guy, as you might know. So Fiorentina West Ham, I definitely will watch that. But <laughs> FA Cup and the Champions League only because, listen, here in Canada, we mostly got you know Premier League. I mean, there was some Serie A on early on. I mean, back in the days of the score here in Canada, but we saw a lot of Premier League. So it's I feel like. A, an English, a, a Premier League original, uh -huh. and it has a lot to do with what's going on in the FA Cup as well. You know, we covered a lot of the Serie A at the score back yeah. in those days. I remember one Saturday, um, we had six nil nils. <laughs> six nil nils. How do you cut those packs, those highlight packs? Uh, they were pretty short highlight packs, <laughs> oh pretty well, low light packs, yeah. I think. But no, we love doing that, actually. That was, that was fantastic. But yeah, listen, I mean, I love the FA Cup, but for me, it is still the Champions League, right? And and the ability, if they are going for a treble as well, that will add to it as well, don't you think? Because that is truly a remarkable achievement. It happens so rarely. We saw Inter Milan do it in 2010. Uh, Bayern Munich did it, of course. Manchester and then they United fired their manager with 1999, of course. Gotta get that in there. Just. <laughs> Bayern Munich blew that one, let's be honest. But still one of the great moments, though, in world football, right? So I think because the treble's on the line, but, but a final is always the great equalizer too, right? Mm -hmm. Because it can be, you know, one great team, one average mm -hmm. team but because it's the pressure of that one game and the pressure of being a final that can change everything sometimes and if, sorry finals elevate the tournament as well yeah. like no one actually cares let's be honest about the conference league but now you have West Ham and Fiorentina in there and that ends up being a big final for either side yeah exactly there's a trophy on the line and yeah when it's Manchester versus Manchester it's always going to be very exciting especially City know that they have to play a week later against Inter Milan pressure is on for Guardiola mm -hmm. yeah it is it's going to be fun though regardless mm -hmm. great few weeks coming up uh, when we come back though we'll talk about what's coming up this weekend in the Premier League these guys will pick games they are having both sets of eyes on Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets that's a win as mentioned, it's the penultimate weekend of the Premier League season. Here's what's on the slate this weekend. Bournemouth against Manchester United, of course. The Red Devils in control of their own destiny for top four football. But Bournemouth can be a tough team. Wolves against Everton, a massive game for the Toffees there. Brighton and the relegated Southampton. Fulham take on Crystal Palace. Roy Hodgson, by the way, says he might be back next year as Crystal Palace <laughs> manager. Forrest Arsenal, that's really interesting to me, a fascinating tilt. Uh, the Gunners need to win that one. Forrest, they need to win it as well, let's be honest. City-Chelsea, which a year ago was think would be the marquee matchup of this, this weekend. Instead, it, it might not be. Uh, Liverpool against Aston Villa. West Ham leads a massive game there for Leeds. And Newcastle against Leicester. What a win for Newcastle, by the way, midweek against Brighton. All right, um, Sarah, let's start with you. Which match are you focusing on? Yeah, I had to go with Manchester City and Chelsea, of course, because if Manchester City win, they win the Premier League. Has to be the biggest game, of course. And still, even though Chelsea have had a very poor season, they're still one of the top teams in, in England, and we know that Chelsea and Man City, it's, it's a big match. It's at the Etihad. City are on a 23-game unbeaten run at the Etihad. Chelsea, on the other hand, have lost their last three visits there. They tied no Nottingham Forest last weekend, and we know they only have one win under Frank Lampard's 11 matches. I see this only going one way. City know what they have on the line. They're going to come out swinging. Chelsea, on the other hand, they're safe. They're not you know, going to be in UCL or Europa League contention, but they're not going to get relegated, so I think they're just cruising at this point. City are going to smash them, I think. I'm looking at like a 3-0, so I'm taking City... No to both teams to score and over two and a half. And I think that's at plus 240. No, a little parlay. I, yeah, yeah. I had to because the value, it was so no, tricky. No, I get it. Yeah. That, that's how you got to kind of attack these city games. Yeah. But I don't remember ever seeing Chelsea this big of an underdog. 12 to 1. Mm. I know I know they're not playing well. Um, I'm expecting, you know, City to rest some players. I don't think Chelsea win the game, but I think surely that that's worth a bet. Are the numbers a statement more in Chelsea or more in City being how, how dominant they Ooh, are? Oh, that's, that's a, a good, good one. Question. Yeah, yeah. I would say probably more on how poor Chelsea have been. Yeah. Really. Probably. You know? Because if you look at City against, you know, teams in the bottom half of the table, I don't remember a team that's gotten up that high this season. I'm sure there has been, but not many teams reach that no, number. But normal Chelsea is never going to be plus 1,200 mm -hmm. against. No, no, no. No matter never. how good City no, no, is, no. right? But yeah, City should, they should be able to handle them pretty easily. Did you, so. did you see that uh, Frank Lampard said this week in his press conference that he, he really tried to get Chelsea to sign Haaland when he yeah. was 
coach at Chelsea and they had no interest. Everybody's in saying that. Now. Everyone. Yeah, I don't like under Solskjaer like, come in and say yeah. that. Too. It's yeah. like yeah. Arsene Wenger. Remember, he tried to sign everybody. Ronaldo, yeah. oh, yeah. Messi, they did though, Ronaldinho. Yeah. So, but yeah. you didn't, did you, Arsene? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't sign yeah, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. I hate those. Uh, oh, yeah, we tried to sign him. Like, yeah, but, well, he was pretty good at Salzburg back in those days as well. Everyone knew how good he'd be. But uh, still, you know, listen, City, Chelsea should be interesting. Uh, and Mikey, what do you have? I'm looking at Manchester United and Bournemouth in Shock. this one. Of course. <laughs> well, I mean, you you look at the the slate of the schedule, and there's not too many games with too much at stake. This one has a ton at stake. Liverpool have rounded into form. They're right on Manchester United's tails, and right now they're one point behind United. Yeah. Of course, they've played one more match, and United are going to be on the road. And the reason why this one's so tricky for United is because on the road away from Old Trafford, they've mm-hmm. been pretty dreadful. Just one away win in their last six matches, six Premier League matches, and they're going up against a Bournemouth team who have gotten safety. Gary O'Neill has done a, a tremendous job with this Bournemouth side. Like we've talked about, I think, in past weeks, they were the favorites to be relegated, and yet here we are, two weeks left to go, and Bournemouth are safe from being relegated, which is an accomplishment on the own, on its own. But downside to that is Bournemouth has taken their foot off the gas pedal now. They've lost their last two games. Crystal Palace beat them 2-0 pretty handily over the weekend, so they don't really have much to play for. So the reason why I'm actually back in Manchester United here is because they have way too much at stake. They're getting Varane back. They're starting to get a little bit healthier. Rashford looks like he could be in the side this weekend. So I think I'm going to go Manchester United to win and over three and a half goals or under three and a half goals. That's at plus 150. Same thing. You got to find a way to find value. There are a lot of teams on the beach at the moment. Mm, yeah. You, know, you get the flip flops, Derby, Fulham, Crystal Palace, Bournemouth. Fulham. For we, sure. we had, I think you and I had Bournemouth to go down at the beginning of the season oh, yeah. like, without yeah. question. You know, Gary O'Neill's gone there. Scott Parker's Bournemouth, by the yeah, way. Scott Parker's, yeah, Scott Parker's. Yeah, and in comes Gary O'Neill on an interim basis, then becomes full time, and, and I mean, he should get uh, votes for manager, manager of the year. He's yeah. so? been just yeah, yeah. brilliant so far. So they're playing for their gaffer right now, give them that much. Uh, let's hear, though, from the other manager in this one, Eric Ten Hag. Uh, when I see this project, so it's, first of all, important to get into the Champions League. So I, I don't think and uh, today, at that standard, I look to the next game, and that's Bournemouth. We have to win that and to get in the Champions League. So we have everything in our hands. So a focus on the game. Our game's coming up, first game most important. By the way, the ownership um, issues there continue, right? And now the rumors are that they're going to wait until the end of the season, uh, later in, in May, maybe June, to kind of decide, because there's division right now between the family as to what the right pathway forward is. As a United fan, this must be driving you absolutely crazy. Yeah, because it has implications on United's summer transfer plans, and that's such a big part of this next step of the rebuild of Manchester United, if you want to call it that, right? They've got a nice framework in place. They've got their manager in place. The next thing you got to do is add depth and add sometimes even quality depth into their side and having ownership question marks, stuff that could drag out until the summer, like I said, just puts a dent into their summer transfer plan. So, yeah, it's driving me insane. Uh, Buddy, who do you have uh, this weekend? I'm going with a big home win for Liverpool. Liverpool minus one and a half. And the reason being is it's their last game at Anfield. And I was just going through some of their final matches at Anfield, different campaigns. They have an incredible record. They've won every one of them dating back to 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. They want to put a performance in front of the cop. The only thing I'm, I'm a little bit worried about, no Jurgen Klopp. And he's kind of upset about it, too, because, you, I mean, Liverpool's saying goodbye to a few players. But I still think they put in a really good performance. Villa, not so good on the road. Um, and I think there's a chance that Liverpool can really overwhelm Aston Villa this weekend. So I, I like Liverpool for a big win. Yeah, club on the sidelines because uh, of an issue speaking about yeah. Paul Tierney, mm-hmm. uh, what, two weeks ago now. Should have said, mm-hmm. Shouldn't have said what he said. And he's been banned two games. One's been suspended. Uh, here is, by the way, Jurgen Klopp talking about what an emotional event it might be. This game is super difficult for different reasons. Uh, maybe spoke already with the boys earlier this week about it. Uh, it's super important for us, and it's kind of super emotional as well for for a different reason because um, we really say goodbye to, from my point of view, for Liverpool. Yeah, like Bobby Firmino, James Milner. The Ox, of mm. course, going uh, Naby Keita. Not quite as emotional to see Naby Keita go, perhaps. Uh, 58 million pounds didn't really work out. But So, Sharps, will they let him on the pitch after the whistle? That's a great question. Mm. I would think so. It's right. For, it's a match ban, and when the match finishes, try and stop him. him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? I mean, if you feel like he needs to be there. I know he said some crazy stuff, but... 
I think so, yeah. yeah but listen, moment. same by to Milner in particular and, and more Firmino, who was you know, so essential to those trophy winning Liverpool mm-hmm. sides in that false nine position. I mean, it will be emotional and the Anfield crowd get very emotional, of course. Legend? So. Would you categorize for me as legend? Champions League winner, Premier League winner, hundred yeah, percent legend. Yeah, yeah legend. Sure. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, that's a lot to you do. You win trophies, you become a legend, don't you? That's I true. Think. Yeah. Well, you haven't won trophies for so long, like real trophies, proper trophies. Uh-huh. Um, it doesn't take much to become a, a Liverpool legend. Yeah, I think that's maybe that's partly what it is, yeah. right? They they love to embrace their own, right? And Bobby Firmino, with the best smile in the game. <laughs> me was definitely a legend. Uh, my game, I have uh, Nottingham Forest Arsenal. I love a bit of chaos. <laughs> this game's got chaos written all over it for me, right? So Arsenal, of course, really have to win this one. Otherwise, City won. They're going to win anyway, but regardless. Forest, you know, they're fighting for their lives at the moment. They win this match. They're looking really good. 37 points, probably safe. Mm-hmm. I think it's fair to say. Um, now, last time they played, Arsenal smashed them 5 0, but Forest at home now. Yeah. All year long, they've brought chaos late in games. So I can see um, a high scoring game here. I'm going to take Arsenal to win it still. They are still Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm taking Arsenal to win and over three and a half goals total. That's plus 210. So I think Ooh. that's uh, pretty decent. Yeah. I think Forest, man. The seven of their eight wins have come at City Ground. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a difficult fixture for Arsenal, man. Honestly, I, I can see a 3 2 either way. I'm thinking, I mean, if, if, if Forest win that game, don't be surprised to see a pitch invasion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah probably. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Like, that City Ground's been a party yeah. all yeah. year long. That, this it's is been their last so long since they've been in the Premier League. They're enjoying every minute of it. I hope they stick around because they should be in the Premier League. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been, a, been a fun ride. And, listen, Arsenal, listen, they, they've had their bump. It's cost them. We know that. I still don't think they'll, they'll bring it on this weekend. Uh, Granite Xhaka, by the way, by Leverkusen. Yeah, next see season, you later. Which opens a big old hole in that midfield for some pretty good players coming in. So uh, one eye to watch is definitely Arsenal. When we come back, we'll talk about teams you're watching this summer because, uh, well, there's going to be a lot of movement in the transfer market. So that coming up for you right after this. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. I know the season's not finished just yet. There's still much to play for in all the various leagues, but let's start looking ahead, shall we, to this summer, which should be a transformative summer for a lot of teams. So much money to be spent and wasted, okay? Big names on the move, maybe managers moving to new teams, leaving teams. It's going to be fascinating, Sarah. So let's start with you. Which team are you most excited to watch this summer? (laughs) Going to say Barcelona. Barcelona, of course you are. No, 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 of course. (laughs) I won't say uh, my own team, but naturally I feel like I have to say Real Madrid being the biggest rivals, especially with that man over there, Jude Bellingham, linked heavily. We're not sure how long Cruz and Modric are going to be around for, not to mention how long Carlo Ancelotti Mm -hmm. is going to be around for. So it's always good to keep one eye on the rival. But I also think Newcastle, Castle is going to be really interesting. Are they going to finally start spending some of that big money we know they have? Once again this morning on, you know, Twitter, I'm seeing the Neymar rumors coming up that he's heading to Newcastle. But I think Newcastle will be really interesting because we know they've been a little bit, you know, responsible with their spending, but we know they have the capability to bring in some massive, massive talent. So I'm curious to see what they do over the summer. Given how they've built Newcastle so far, do you think Neymar's the right fit? I mean, we know what he can do, right? When he's healthy and when he's happy, he's still probably one of the top five players in world football. Yeah. Um, is he the kind of player that they need? I mean, I, it's tricky because his talent, you'd never say no to someone like Neymar. Yeah. His creativity skills are unmatched. I mean, really, besides Messi and Ronaldo, he's probably that third player there. He's fantastic. I know, though, there's sometimes, yeah, the drama or the injury concern with him, but... I think you risk it for him because if he's healthy and fit, this guy can change a football game, and I, I think it's worth it for them. I don't know. I, th- I think I disagree, honestly, mm-hmm. because the teams that have won big major trophies recently didn't involve Neymar, and he comes with a lot of baggage. And I think you can win without a player like that. Um, you know, he had a success in Barcelona with Messi at his peak, and that Barcelona team was fantastic. You can speak to that more than anybody else. But I just think, I mean, I don't think they need to waste their time with a guy like Neymar. I think there's other players available that can help them win a Premier League or even potentially go on to win a Champions League. I mean, you need another caliber of player to go all the way and do that. But if I were to say within the Premier League, can you add a couple pieces that aren't of Neymar's quality or aren't Neymar to win? I think so. Like who? I, Sorry. I would agree with, with Albert if it wasn't Newcastle we're talking about. Because Newcastle's yet to draw in that big name player, and if they're if Neymar for whatever reason is willing to go, I mean whatever reason is mm-hmm. willing to go to Newcastle, 
then Newcastle has to jump all over that. It's not every day you get a player of Neymar's caliber to be willing to go play for, for Newcastle. He can slot in right where St. Maximin is, and I think he can do a, probably a way better job than... I mean, he can definitely do a way better job than than he could. So, yeah, I don't think you can turn that down. If you're Manchester City, if you're Liverpool, if you're even Manchester United, yeah, you can find mm. other options. I don't know if Newcastle can find other options on that the, can take them to the next level. On the business side of things, it makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Your shirt sales are going to go through the roof. But money mm-hmm. is not an issue for Newcastle United in that state-owned club. Right. And if you look at Neymar with PSG and who he's had on the team with him, and they can't do it. They can do it domestically, but they can't do it in Europe. But it's not more so what makes P- you think he can go to Newcastle PSG and change issue, Newcastle? Isn't it? That's more of a PSG issue. He is one of the main players on PSG. He's been that way for the yeah, past but, six, seven but seasons. But PSG has had this issue before Neymar, before Messi. It's just an issue that they've had. So, they so keep... Neymar takes no blame. He's... In that. I, I don't. Th- I wouldn't blame PSG losing no, because of Neymar. I'm not saying, but does he take blame in in that? He had Mbappe beside him and Messi. Would you I, be I, s- and Cavani saying the same stuff about Mbappe? Yeah, that's the you could say the exact same thing, but Mbappe is younger than but Neymar. But Neymar won everything with Barcelona. Yeah, he also Things did with well with Neymar. Is, is yeah, and time. like look at what he does you, with you, Brazil. You talk about the financials, right? And it's a valid point. They can afford whoever they want as an ownership group, but can they afford it through financial fair play, right? And mm-hmm. it's the first year in the Champions League. They got a balance of books in the previous five years, yeah. right? He makes a lot of money. Um, and you're right, though. I mean, they need that big brand to sell, and that's the next move for this club. But living in Newcastle, man, that's yeah. been in Newcastle. That part of the world? No, no. Right? It's, the Geordies. It's pretty grey. It's pretty wet. It'd be hard to go from Paris to Newcastle. It would be difficult, yeah. And as for a Brazilian, yeah. I mean, there's been some successful Brazilians playing for Newcastle and Middlesbrough. Mm-hmm. Remember Juninho? Yeah. Right? Just beloved up there. Bruno the fans Gilles would love, love this it. guy. Joe Linton loves it, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. So it, it can happen. But for a guy like a bit of a party boy, like Neymar, I'm not sure if he'd embrace the Newcastle lifestyle. I mean, he'd probably just fly out and go wherever he wants, right? But right. but he would be that guy at Newcastle. That's the thing. He was never that True. guy at Barcelona. He wanted to go to Paris and be that guy. He wasn't because of Mbappe. If he went to Newcastle, he sure. would be that guy. Well, he and was he, there before Mbappe came. Mbappe was at Monaco when, when uh, but how Neymar long? PSG. But how long did it last? And Neymar was never PSG's... Yeah. Person, like that's the thing. I really think he yeah. wanted to. I mean, there was money involved, but he really wanted to get out of Messi's shadow, maybe. And so it never really worked out at PSG. I think at Newcastle it would work out, and he'd bring his whole posse with him. He'd have enough of Brazilians around. Him. <laughs> <laughs> How much fun would it be to see though Neymar at Newcastle? No, it'd be great yeah. in the Prem anyway. Oh really. yeah, that's fantastic. another team that's added right up there with the mix. I think if you inject Neymar into that side, they're they're a contender. This, this has been so conservative so far. That's all. They've been so smart with their build. Right, they haven't gone with that splash just yet, right? So I wonder if they want to do it for one more year, improve the level slowly. Because I mean, right now they've been the third best team all year long, really for me. Um, any team you're looking for, Albert, as far as this summer? <laughs> I know is it is it Spurs? Uh, Spurs definitely won. They are interesting. I, the thing is, what with Tottenham, you just don't know what to expect, right? Ryan Mason is angling for the job. Is he going to take the job? Pochettino was is is the man that fans want. He's going to Chelsea. I think Chelsea might be the team, at least in the Premier League, because it sounds like Poch is going to be there. I mean, we hear from everybody, Fabrizio saying it, so it seems like it's done. His main priority is to bring in a striker. Is it possible that Pochettino can lure Harry Kane to Chelsea instead of Manchester United? That's huge. I don't think it will happen. I, I don't think it will happen, but... They'll I mean, try. I, there'll be a phone call made. We're going to find out how loyal is actually loyal. I don't think Harry, Harry would go to Chelsea because of the London connection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think if he's moving, he's going up north. Or is going overseas. But that's his guy. I know that they, they, they're in love. I and know that. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's Poch made Harry what he is. I, right. I get all that. Yeah. But Harry's got such a loyal, blind loyalty to that club and that fan base, it yeah. seems. For him to go across to Chelsea, oh. that would crush Spurs fans, as you know. I just don't think he'd do it. There's no, also still a that. chance that Kane stays at Tottenham, too. What's the percentage, do you think? <sighs> right, now, right now, I'm... I'm 50-50 really to be completely honest really? with you yeah I, I mean just based on everything that he's saying he seems like he's really devoted yeah. to that club but then there's also the alert the right things of course he is yeah it's hard to say which I'm um, with Mikey it's hard to say which way he's leaning um, but yeah anyway go back to Chelsea listen I still think that Chelsea have a, a world class 11 in that mm-hmm. side you add a striker that can add 20 to 25 goals whoever the case may be I think they're right in the title race come next season yeah. there's no reason why they shouldn't be they, they could well be yeah but although going from 13th to 
first. That's a big jump. I don't it care is, who you are. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, does there it? There was a lot behind the season for Chelsea, right? You had that. you had the Bramovich stuff. You had Tuchel go. Boldy came in and it doesn't know how to make a decision, which can hurt them next season too. But if you bring in a proper manager and you start figuring out everything on the footballing side properly, which I think Poch can do that, and I think they'll be fine. Imagine the players WhatsApp group at Chelsea. <laughs> oh, Poch arrives like what you summer, pay? Oh boy, who's leaving? Who's yeah. staying? Have you got a phone call yet? Because there's gonna be a squad trimming there that's going to just that's uh, gotta be a fun game for a manager with all those players oh, I think it'd be so much fun like and basically if, if he takes a job he's saying to Todd Bowley listen whoever the new sporting director is I'm going to have my imprint on, on this squad right? I'm going to tell you who I think should stay and who should bring in and that's going to be very exciting for a yeah. new manager what about Neymar at Chelsea Yes, yeah, also possible. I feel like that's I've a better that. fit. I mean, that's the thing is, fit. do you want to add more fuel to the fire? Well, Todd my, Bowley, well, they have you? a ton of wingers. Yeah. The thing is, yeah, they well, first of all, position-wise, it doesn't really make a ton of sense. But also, there's so much talent and so many big, you know, heads in there already. You want to put somebody like Neymar in that locker room? I think that's a mistake. I think it would make much more sense for him to go to Manchester well, United. Well, Posh had him at PSG, so you know, you wonder whether he even wants him. Yeah, because there were those That's rumblings true. that the fan, the, uh, the the big name, big name Charlie's champagne name Charlie's, champagne Charlie's, champagne I love that one. Champagne Charlie's didn't like Posh. What have you had one in your career? You know who oh, I am for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm Audi not sure Cup, whether he man. wants him. 2018 um, Audi Cup. <laughs> 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 Mikey, uh, who do you have and why is it Manchester United? It's not. <laughs> I'm going off the board here. I actually have two teams to keep an eye on. Uh, first one is Brighton. And their mm. summer transfer window, I think, is going to be one of the most fascinating mm-hmm. stories. Who's going to leave the club? Are they going to be able to still survive despite those big names keep leaving the club? Who besides James Milner are they going to be bringing It's not official their... yet. There's a few clubs leaves one of them too. Oh, yeah. so it's not a, not a done deal Looks yet. Looks like Mohamed Daoud is almost yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like that too. So That's who are they going to find in to restock their cabinets per se? Brighton is just such a fascinating story. They've back-to-back seasons have had a really good year. Can they take that next step and, and you know really cement themselves as perennial, primarily Champions League outskirts kind of <laughs> kind of so team. It's almost like like who is the next underwhelming Brighton signing that turns out to be world class? Exactly, exactly. So they're a fascinating team. The other one, right by uh, Brighton, there. I'm looking at Brentford, and we know what's going on with Ivan Tony. We wow. know the whole situation. Wow. He's banned for eight months. They gotta have a big. What's center. their next move? What's their next play? What happens with Thomas Frank? I think Brighton and Brentford are two really fascinating teams. Because they may have sold Ivan Tony this summer as well. Yeah. And you would think that's now off the table. I would think. Although he's still young enough, maybe you, you, you sign him to a long-term contract as you would, and then you say, listen, we'll, we'll eat it for the first few months, knowing that in January he's returning. Uh-huh. But, I mean, I know they also talk about him getting a new deal at Brentford as well. I mean, what a player he is. An eight-month ban, that's, that's significant. Devastating for the club, too. Mm-hmm. They have to find a way to still keep pace with what they've done the last two years, and I don't know if you can do that without Ivan Tony. so you got to bring in some really significant replacements. Back to Brighton, who do you think is going to be the two or three or just one name player that's that's leaving Alexis McAllister it sounds like one, it's right? going to be him it right can't, like he's definitely Caicedo as well Caicedo, Caicedo, yeah. Caicedo too but Caicedo. I think McAllister just had a little World Cup under the belt too and his age there's so many teams are going to be going those after two, this I think guy are so th- does anything yeah. change though if they finish the season in a European spot whether it's the Europa League or the Conference League does that if you finish in the Europa League do you try a bit harder to keep these players for sure but if you have someone like I don't know a Manchester United a Chelsea and Arsenal knocking on your door if you're that player it's just naturally the next step right this yeah. is it's a no, bigger right. club. It's tough for them. Like I don't think it's a matter of loyalty or whether or not the club are going to try and keep them. Of course they're going to try and keep them. But for yeah. the player? And clearly, I mean, the recruitment's unbelievable. They oh, can unearth yeah. these gems, which you've never even heard of, right? So if they can do that after losing some players, maybe they don't have to mm-hmm. keep Yeah, you guys. sell McAllister for what? 75, 80 million. Casado for the same. Ooh, That's a yeah. lot of money coming in. And you can sign some very good players or a lot of good players that will become great players. Yeah, it seems you that know? they come to terms with it too. Maybe the Zerbi's a one to watch. Hey, does he a stay? Good, good shout. Because, Sounds I mean, like he will. I, I hope, hope he does. does. I like hope he, he does. <laughs> All right. We're out of time for this block, but uh, guess what's next? A little bit of Mikey the Singh, a little game. bit of red card, yellow card play on. Uh, you demanded it. You didn't demand it. <laughs> but it's great regardless. <laughs> Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. It's that time of the show again for... <laughs> 
Hey! Red car, yellow. We should, right. we should get some intro music. I that yeah. we was that your game show voice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Welcome to Red Card, <laughs> Yellow Card with your favorite, my favorite, Michael C. Hey. That's more nice. like a stripper's uh, yeah, yeah. DJ, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come on down. Oh, hey. That's Mikey. Mikey. Right. Sorry, is right. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Hi. Go ahead. We were just talking about <laughs> Ivan Tony, and I'm saying that Brentford should sign Ivan Tony to a new contract. He's out for eight months. He's banned. He's got one year remaining after next season, so 18 months on his contract. Essentially, when he returns, I'm saying they've got to sign him to a new contract right now. Oh, uh, can I Go start? For it. I will play 100%. You sign that guy. He's a... Uh... That's what the hardest thing to do in the Premier League is not score goals. He's prolific. Mm -hmm. He's young enough right now. He seems to enjoy the club. The fans love him. And quite frankly, the hypocrisy of the Premier League to ban players eight months for betting on, on a league that depends on gambling money. And there's so many shirts out there with gambling sponsorships on them. Um, I understand integrity of the sport. and You can't bet in your own games. I understand that. But it's a lot, eight months, if you ask me. It really is. So, yeah, sign him up. Give him all the money so he can make more great bets. Yes, I'm going to go red card. <laughs> I love Ivan Tony. I think he's one of the best strikers in the Premier League. But for Brentford, if you're missing him for eight months, what's that take him to January? Mm -hmm. oh. Brentford need his goals. Brentford, yeah, okay, they've been a good story. But if you start off the season poorly, and all of a sudden by January or December, January, you're in a relegation battle, that can last until the end of the season. I think you need to move on from him, bring in someone else who can get you goals, maybe not as many as Ivan Tony, but at least someone who can get you goals and keep you in the in the Premier League comfortably. So you're saying sell him? Sell him. Sell him now. But you can still sign strikers. You can, but right? you still have that wage bill on your books, right? Mm -hmm. One more year. You got. I mean, if you're Brentford, I don't think they have tons of money over there, so you got to move well, on. Well, if you're suspended, are you pay, is he being oh, paid? That's a good, he is. That's a good he question. He is. They do okay. have to pay yeah, his, so his And his they're going to get, high they're high still going to get a really good fee for him. Like, it might not be as much if you were to be playing at the beginning of the season, but they'll still get some but money I'll flip from. the script on you there. If they sign him to a new contract now, they might not have to pay him what they would have had to pay him if That's he wasn't a good point too. It's also on Ivan Tony. Maybe he want, Maybe he feels like, hey, I'm better than this club. I can move on to a top six yeah, club. Yeah, of course. Right? So course. that can also be the well, case. Well, there was that but famous video him. of him and, uh, being approached by a fan in, in, Years in his ago, car. Years yeah. ago, ah, And yes. they said, so are you a footballer? He goes, yeah, but nowhere exciting. Yes, uh, that's right. Yeah, oh Didn't my look goodness. Good. That says a lot, right? It's a long time ago, though. Yeah. Sarah, yeah. what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of honestly both of them made such good points, and I see both sides. I think, yeah, an issue is paying him out if you have to pay him on suspension, but obviously everything he's done for the club, we know he can score those goals, but I think it's a matter of, yeah, they have to look at what they're doing right now. They need to sign somebody else, so if that means that they got to get rid of him in order to pay those wages, then maybe that's what you have to do, but it is a bit unfortunate because we know what he's done for Brentford and how good he is like yeah. the whole situation is just a little bit exaggerated and no, unnecessary. no one takes a penalty better than him I love oh, the way he's like one step boom yeah. confident yeah. too right yeah. if yeah, I'm great. if I'm a top four club and I need a striker Absolutely. I am 100% mm -hmm. trying to do everything I can to get sure. him right now because you're going to get him at a discounted rate alright moving on Sarah and I talked <laughs> about this a little bit this week and I've seen some rumblings on social media about comparing this Manchester City team to that 2008-2009 Barcelona team. I'm saying that that 2008-2009 Barcelona team would run circles around this Manchester City team. Sarah's already all dancing. Day, all Sarah. day, all day. No, okay, well, well, what we spoke about, we were actually kind of agreeing, though. Manchester City side is fantastic. We've seen what they've done this year. Individual talent, fantastic, but... The Barcelona team was good for so long. They were dominant. They won in 2008-9, and they did, won a treble again with a bunch of the same players in 2014-2015. And even in between that, they were still winning La Liga. They were so dominant, as well as Mikey brought this up, but Tiki Taka football, that was embedded there. That was their prime, And too. that's exactly how they would run circles around, you know, John Stones and Rodri. Xavi and Iniesta would just be with Busquets in the back, just yeah. making these guys dance. It's nothing to take away, I don't think, from Manchester City. I think it's just we need to see the City side dominant like this for a few more years, mm -hmm. and then we'll have that conversation. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree in that. They start winning European Cups on a regular basis. We can mm -hmm. have that debate for sure. I'm kind of yellow carding in that, listen, that Barcelona like, Lone team is the best team I've ever seen, uh -huh. for sure. But let's not dismiss this City team just yet. Sure. I mean, they are incredible, right? They got a better all-out number nine than Barca ever had. Sorry, David Villa. 
Oh, don't you dare. Well, <laughs> Veer was, don't <laughs> no, get me wrong, no. he's world class. He's wonderful. Yeah, Samuel Eto'o at that Samuel point. Samuel Eto'o. Uh, Thierry Henry, Henry on the left. Pretty yeah, good players. Messi but on the right. What Haaland's doing this year is unprecedented, right? Um, there's no Iniesta, there's no Xavi, and there's no Messi on, on the city, but there's some players that are pretty damn close. Gundogan is so uh, underrated. He's <laughs> so underrated. Close. I think Gundogan is one of, the, like, if not City's best player, maybe it, second. But I think we're reaching if you are even trying to compare him to Iniesta right now. That's, are that's, you really doing that? That's uh, Well, Gundogan specifically? No, obviously not. Anyone on that team. I'm, saying, I'm saying the gap isn't what people... That, though, listen, I, I, really Xavi and Iniesta that. were incredible, yeah. right? And, uh, the great, some of the greatest that ever played the game. We know that they won you know, with Spain as well. I get all that, right? But... Memory makes uh, the heart grow funder no, in many ways. Yeah, right? like he, like no, 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 take no, it away. Go, what, 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 I said this wrong here. Right? I, I've said they are some of the greatest players that ever played the game. They're legends. They're world class, and they were better than Man City's midfield. Yes, I'm saying that. Okay, but listen, when they were playing, I respected them, and since they've become these godlike figures, like footballers and athletes do, right? They retire and they get better and, yes and better and better. Playing. And yes, hmm? still playing. And yes, is playing no, his last not. game. <laughs> no, yeah, he's playing his last game for Vissel Kobe, I think, this weekend. No, I, I, I hear playing. your point, though. He's I hear not playing. your point. So they're both, um, both defensively? <laughs> yeah. You know what? They're both, both heavy. Defensively, possession. Carlos Puyol? Are you kidding me? Puyol. Hey, listen, Puyol's a big character, really good player. Uh, there, there's better centre backs than Carlos Pio. Oh, I didn't think there Jared are, PK but I think he's still. Yeah, yeah, the two of them. No, I think there were still like their class though. Victor Valdez and the. I'm just saying the gap isn't quite as far yeah. as people think. And if they start winning European cups, if Pet gets two or three European cups in the next five years, Changes then there's a everything. definite conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah Torre was in centre back there too for Barcelona. Uh, who dominates possession in back? that? A little bit. Barcelona dominates there. possession in that game, of course. Do they? Of course. What do you, that's like so what that, they I lived mean, on. That's kind of how I look at it, right? Who's going to dominate the ball will win that game. It'll be Barcelona. I think right? Isn't so, Pep better now? I, Isn't he evolved? I, I, I'm going to be on the <laughs> fence, though. I'm going to be on the fence just because I think Messi trumps all. Uh, would they? I don't know Good if they run circles. That, that is a, yeah, run circles that, that, is a stretch. That's a great three, question. No. That's a great question. Wouldn't you, know, you love to be Pep? able to like... See that? Like you can actually. on like you know these little funny video games. Yeah, I love how he points at Mike. Why do you point at me? <laughs> <Because> <laughs> 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 this, you, you play a damn sight more than I do. I know that much. Pep v Pep, who wins, man? Oh, it's a good Pep question. Yeah, Pep v Pep 2008. Bald Pep, Pep 2023. Or, uh, receding hairline. <laughs> receding hairline. Pep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, the more I think about it, I, I take back my Javi and Iniesta comments. Thank you. You no, knew you, you were wrong. <laughs> I was you knew you were wrong. wrong. I love Gundo. Yeah. Gundo's great. I love Gundo. That was silver back in the day. Was incredible too, right? I mean. Listen. As long as you Kevin know. De Bruyne <laughs> will look pretty good in that Barcelona team. Who wins the battle between Thierry Henry and Kyle Walker on that side? Oh. Does Thierry just eat him up? I think so. Not of that. Not of that era of Thierry Henry. He was yeah, really TT good. Two thousand four, maybe. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne. I don't know. What about the Ebro era at Barca? I don't know. Yeah. If, I don't know not if City's great. defense can handle that front three of what is it? Eto, that's, Messi, and Thierry Henry. Yeah, that's, that is. That's but then the fancy. other way, you got Holland De Bruyne. I, that's a, that's a really great one. Kevin De Bruyne. That might be an all-timer uh, in this, uh, mm-hmm. this uh, segment. Red card, yellow card, all-timer. Kevin De Bruyne wouldn't get into Barcelona's midfield. <laughs> he wouldn't. Well, like then. Yeah. And he's not getting in for Iniesta. <laughs> he's not getting in for Xavi. Uh, he's not getting in for the role. Through? Was he no, just he, after he, that, wasn't he? No, he? he started playing in Barcelona play... in 2008, but he wasn't a starter. No. You can play, De Bruyne, the Champions you can play De Bruyne as a false nine. I think he can get in ahead of Eto and play with Henri and Messi. Oh, no, no, no. You're changing up too much now. Well, he's done it. He's done it for City. I think De Bruyne finds his way into those know. teams of any generation. Holland ahead of Eto? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Or Dalvia. Right. Okay. Dalvia. I don't know about this anymore. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> of, <laughs> speaking of Champions League football, <laughs> I'm saying five Premier League clubs should qualify for the Champions League. Not four. I think four is too little. I think five should get into the Champions why? League. Sarah, go. I... Uh, well, can I f- figure out why more? I, I think know. I think the Premier League is the best league in the world, and I think that there are five teams that are deserving in the Premier League that are more deserving than some of the other teams that get into the Champions League. Okay, I'm going to say no only because the Premier is the best league in the world right now, but we've seen the ups and downs of the leagues. We've talked about, you know, when the Serie A was on top, when La Liga was on top. How would you determine then who deserves to go? I think the system right now is working. And I think that's also why it makes it such a dogfight to make it into the top four. I don't think it's fair to say, well, because it's the Premier League, we're going to give them five teams it's a bit disrespectful to what if Spain I, what if I Italy. said La Liga no I, I don't think I don't think it would be fair if you were to do it to any of the top five even though I know we consider three above some of those others but I, I think it's just it's not 
fair to the other countries. And right now, like it, it is working. If you're gonna do it, you kind of have to do it for all of them, in my opinion. And like I said, it makes it so much more interesting to fight for those yeah. two it's seconds. It's all based on those coefficient rankings, right? So that's, yeah. that's how that's determined. Um, as well, I love the Premier League. I'm going to have to go red card on this one. Um, because if you look at the teams that are winning European finals, I mean, you can go back to Chelsea just winning and Manchester United winning the Europa League. But for the most part, it's not English teams that are winning these things. Thank you. Like, there's a lot of good Premier League teams, don't get me wrong. But there's, there's really good teams in Spain, in Italy, in France... I mean, Bayern Munich also won. Um, and in Germany, who uh, who can do it in club competitions. And for some reason, England doesn't do it as well as them. It's all about entertainment, right? That's what it should be about mm-hmm. for the fans, right? And I, I don't... So you're pro Super League. Well, I'm so. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> no, heard it here. I like the fairy tale story. It gives me theatre <laughs> yeah, and drama. Yeah. Um, fifth place right now in England is what, Liverpool, right? Yeah. Would you rather see them in the Champions That's League the than, than Victoria Pelzen? But that's on or, them. Uh, that's on them to else? get into a position who to else? be in the well, Champions Well, put me in the qualifying rounds, fifth place. But not, we're not, not talking. automatic birth. Um, oh, okay. Let's see who else we got here. Some of the terrible teams. You learned um, this year how to pronounce Victoria. Pinson. Red Bull, Salzburg. <laughs> Would you prefer Liverpool or Salzburg? But you're you're um, not you're not talking Shackled about the top Celtic. five. Yeah. You're talking Rangers. about all the leagues in in the yeah. Europe. And then, yeah. And there's incredible bias like from our side. From your side, you know. I like I like the minnows. I like those littler teams in in these. No, you put them in the qualifying rounds. But maybe give, maybe give the, the top leagues an extra berth, and not just not just England. I'll give Spain. Yeah. I'll give Italy, I'm open France. To it. I'm open Portugal. to changing things. Port- sure, we'll give you Portugal. You. Yeah. yeah, because <laughs> but, uh, like Milan berth. right now is fifth in the Serie A. So, so like, give the Serie A five teams. Yeah, sure. Well, that's right. what exactly. I'm saying. I think you have to do it for all top five. Or none of them. I don't think you could just favor the EPL. No, 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 that's fine. We're getting a yeah. little, little too infantino here. I think. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yeah, leave it. The it's going to be 82 teams in the Champions League next year. How about just the champions playing knockout football in a bracket? Yes, now we're talking <laughs> okay. like it was back in the 80s and the good old days. The real champions. Before everything changed no, for the worse. I, don't worst. Worry I think it would be more entertaining. But okay. last one I want to get to. I think this week, FIFA announced the 2026 oh, official <laughs> logo. <laughs> For the 2026 FIFA World Cup, and <laughs> I'm saying there you see it on the board. Jesus. I'm saying, careful, listen carefully to this one. I, me personally, could have designed a nicer <laughs> logo for the Can you 2026 you FIFA yeah, World yeah, yeah. Cup. Can we got someone in here. <laughs> what you, do you think? Can we, sorry, can we get some crayons for Michael here? <laughs> do you believe in me? What a fun um, <laughs> See, I don't give a crap about that. That's logos. exactly how I felt. I really don't. And I think it will grow in us. And listen, that, that blank white one, in fairness, that's kind of like the, the first one. But each city's got a color scheme to the, the logo, right? Mm-hmm. So it does look better when you see Toronto's colors and Vancouver. Well, it doesn't really matter on a big scale. Like, anyone else I, in mean, a different honestly, country gonna, isn't I'm using gonna, the different colors. I'm going to give the red as an I don't give a damn. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure you, I haven't seen your graphic design people thought you guys don't know I'm actually an artist well I want to see this then. what is that okay. it's not like, I'm not going to go crazy about it's, logos it'll, I stuff. think it will grow on but people but like every World Cup logo Euro Cup logo it says something about the country or the countries what does that say what is that we we threw, what is that seriously we, we threw the Qatar logo a, bun, a bunch like on oh our yeah, yeah the Qatar logo was like the, the infinity sign 26 I mean yeah, I'm with James. I just don't care. But it's, it's awful. awful. Yeah, but awful. also, like, is the, this Qatar one I'm looking at? It's really not great either. This little infinity. Dun, like, dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. <laughs> uh, we should probably go to yeah, break. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. we're off the rails. Uh, listen, I, I've seen better. Yes. I've seen better, yes. I just couldn't give a It really doesn't more. matter, didn't it? No. Yeah, no. You're we'll, we'll talk some more about the, uh, the World Cup rebranding when we come back in the final block, block five. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win.
see with the color scheme, it's not so bad. It pops more, right? Producer Ellie is really yeah. angry that they wouldn't show some Vancouver. Did FIFA not have enough money for the stock footage of Vancouver? Like, what I happened? I thought there? they weren't bad videos. Did, did it make you excited when you saw these? Do you no. feel like okay, no. it's, it's real, it's legitimate, it's tangible, it's coming Unless to I Canada? saw you in like a Borat like bathing suit <laughs> doing key pumps, that, that would get me excited. That would, what is that? What are we that doing? That would get you excited, me in the Borat bathing suit? That sounds weird, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> look, look at this thing. That's so dull. Well, yeah, but you saw it with the colors, though. I think it popped a lot better. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah, no, this is actually, about? this is Can we crazy. talk about uh, Jose Mourinho? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Jose he's Mourinho. never Mourinho. lost a European final. Until this one coming up against Sevilla. Can I give him some love first, please? Come on. I hate Mourinho, but I love him at the same time. You love him. So, Roma, they haven't reached, they hadn't reached a European final in 31 years until Mourinho got there. They win the first ever conference league and now in the Europa League final. I mean, people, and I've done it too, we've written them off many times, but he somehow does it over and over again. Should he be Tottenham's next manager? Tottenham's yes. next manager. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because when it doesn't there, go well, he? it doesn't go well, and it still bothers me to this day. No, as as a Spurs fan, that they sacked him right before the Carabao Cup final against Manchester yeah. City. And yeah, I, I know, know it's the Carabao Cup final. Regardless, I thought it was a hey. mistake. Hey. What? No, no you are, yeah, yeah, well, you're happy right about now. it now, but you should make fun of it. But if Mourinho was in charge, maybe it would have been different. If he wins, if he wins and brings the Europa League to Rome yeah. as well, does he then move on somewhere? Is it time to go somewhere else? I don't know, he seems to really love it there. So I, I don't know. Can I also, sorry, football? just, can we give some love Portugal? to Sevilla as well? I think that final is going to be great oh, yeah. because Shout of Mourinho. Sevilla. Sevilla, the way they've turned around the season under Mendelibar, they were in almost last 18th. Mm -hmm. Now they're in 10th, mid, like mid-table, but they might win a Europa League. They've turned Again. it around, like around. Yeah, Again, the, uh, Again. Is, is that a successful season? If they finish 10th and win the Europa League? I don't know. I think it's a success from where they started at the at that's, like, that's oh, a they European the Champions trophy. League. That's, yeah, that's but they're not playing in, in Champions but they League. They will. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll they get in Champions League. They get in Champions Come League. Come on, Mourinho! Oh, yeah. Well, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, they they yeah, changed that's that's a, a few uh, years ago now. Season. It's massive. Yeah. All right, uh, we're out of time. Being yelled at in my ear. Um, enjoy the games. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Cheers for watching. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win.